Hey everybody and welcome, welcome back to this week's edition of This Woman Can. I am your host, Janice Sutherland, career strategist for the mature black woman. And as you know, I love a good transition story. I love a good pivot story. I love everything about the mature woman making decisions about their careers and choosing a path that's right for them. And this week is no exception. My guest this week is Angela Fraser. And Angela, Angela has a, an unusual role, but she's a champion for joyful living and joyful money making for older women. She's a joy strategist. She hails from Jamaica and Brooklyn, which is where she spent her formative years. And like many boomer and Gen X black women, her script was set for her by her parents and older siblings to become the doctor, the lawyer or the engineer. She became an engineer. She obtained a BS in Mech Engineering from the University of Pennsylvania and MS in Computer Info Systems from City University of New York and thus began a 30-year career at Fortune 500 tech giants with her rebel spirit on face. As one of a handful of black leaders and a servant leader at heart, Angela became known as a disruptor of norms with her inclusive systems designs, exceptional strengths, focused teams, and motivating others with compelling and audacious goals. I love that word, audacious. She decided to pivot on purpose to become an entrepreneur at 53. And there are so many synergies between and Angela's story, but well, I digress. Let me continue <laughs> with her bio. Angela inspires others to do things that they didn't think were possible by setting a personal example, literally showing people a path to success. Her joyful work includes coaching women in their wisdom phase of life, and she produces Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn, a weekly podcast that advocates liberated living with her best friend of almost 50 years. Angela, welcome to This Woman Can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. As you read, I'm like, oh, I wish I could meet her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, isn't that always the way? You never see yourself until, you know, you know you've done it and you believe you've done it. But until someone reads it out and you see yourself, well, what was that really me? That was really me. You know, own it. Own it, girl. Own it. Absolutely. That internal judge just melts away. I, I've yeah. given my internal judge a name. Her name is Judge Judy. I don't know if okay. you... Or <laughs> this um, very kind of intense uh, um, judge on, who's, who's very popular here in the States. And um, yes. that's, she just melted away. My internal yes. judge just melted away as you read that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I call her my inner mean girl. Huh? So, yeah. <laughs> She's there. She needs to slap every now and then. But, you know. <laughs> I have a so, knob where I just start turning her down. I could just ah, fabulous, <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. So Angela, tell us about your journey and how you got to where you are today. Oh wow. Okay. Where do I jump in? I I, I feel like I am a, a, a series of of pivots. Um, but I'm also, as as you read, been this person who pretty much followed the script um i'm not saying the script was bad it, it it set me up quite well um but you know just kind of fell in line with the expectations of my of my family and um, got my engineering degree i i could have become an artist quite frankly um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but I I just felt like I followed the script. I got married um, when I was, I think 28 is when I was first married. Um, so I, I waited, 29. So I waited to get married, waited to have children, um, had an established career. So I, I followed all the scripts and mm -hmm. I reached a point where it was time to just shake things up a yeah. bit. You know, you can either choose to, or life can kind of <laughs> life mm -hmm. can kind of make you do it. Yeah. Um, I, I felt like um, life was telling me that it was time to to make some changes. So, um, yeah. So one of the big changes uh, in terms of my career was to leave the corporate world mm -hmm. and. Um, 
The first thing that I did, which I had been considering even before leaving, was to go to cosmetology school. Okay. I've always wanted to explore different types of, you know, I guess maybe, I don't know if blue collar is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just felt like there were things that I wanted to explore that I didn't feel that my family would support. Yes, yes. Uh, and so I wanted to learn about the care of naturally curly hair. So I became a licensed natural hair care specialist. And um, I think it was just the, the, the freedom of knowing that I, that I could choose to do something that would not be necessarily seen as the height of intelligence, the height of, um, what is what is the word? The height of um, of excellence. You know these these mm -hmm. words that that are kind of embedded in us, especially um, for me as a boomer, um, as a black boomer, as a black woman mm -hmm. boomer. Mm -hmm. These ideas of um, you know being the best of the best of the best every time. Yeah, yeah. What I realized in that is that. Um, it you could be the best in whatever arena that yes. you to be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um and so that that is the first thing that I did. And so that kind of started me on my journey as an entrepreneur. I um I started a um a wig um line for um discerning older women. Mm -hmm. Um it was you know just focused on curly curly hair that's kind of my 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 lane so a lot of afros a lot of big big hair um and that led me to work in theater i still do that now i um do wig design and wig supervisor yeah. theater productions my wigs have been in film so i can go on and on but that is yeah. one um, of my major pivots um yeah. in my career yeah so I've got a couple of questions, couple couple of questions there around that. Um, first of all, let me, I'll go backwards. So let's start with the sort of the creativity. I think what I found, and definitely one of families and the women I work with, and in my own experience, is that when you work at a senior level in corporate, you almost don't have that creative outlet. Outlet. Yeah. It's almost like that creative that creative side or that expressive side. Is, yeah. a, is a little stifled. So I think you going into cosmet cosmetology, you mm -hmm. know, is your, is your outlet. For me, it's often, it's the garden. I uh, create. Wow. Um, and I, create in, I create in the garden stuff. So I think, you know, I th there, there are more, as I said, we have more than one side. Yeah. And absolutely. sometimes, sometimes that other side wants to, wants to come out. Yeah, yeah. And my second question, my second question is you said you reached that point where you knew it was time to move away from corporate. Yeah. What was the one thing that made you realize, I know what mine was, sure. I, remember, I remember mine, but what <laughs> would you think was the one thing that made you say, you know what, this is it now, I'm done? Sure, so I'll tell you a, a really short um, story or I'll make a long story really short in answering that. So what happened, I'd been working at a huge Fortune 500 company and I had been um, uh, working in the IT department mm -hmm. um, and they had what they call a, a limited restructuring. They were doing layoffs. Right. And um, so I got the call that I was, that my, my role was eliminated. Yeah. However, because prior to leaving, the last two years before I left, I took on an assignment outside of my organization where I let myself go free. Like I um, became one of the co-leads of the Black Employee Network globally. And I did some incredible, um, just, I, I shocked myself in how audacious and bodacious I was 
in that role. And that allowed me to be in front of some very senior people, including the CEO of the company. So they saw me untethered, un <laughs> unstoppable. And after I got that call, which was generated through my department, mm. an hour later, I got a second call and it was HR telling me that some senior people did not want me to leave the company. Right. They asked me if I would stay. Yeah. And so I um, looked for other opportunities. I found one, but Janice, I just thought that now was the time. I felt like I had done all that I could do there. Yeah. And when I took on this role as the co-lead of this um, Black Employee Network, I realized how freaking powerful I was when I just used my talents, when my um, my values were aligned with, with yes. my soul. Um, and I saw just how, how impactful I could be. Mm. And to take it to the people that I wanted to serve more directly. Yeah, yeah. And it was in that moment that I decided, thank you, but I'm going to, I'm going to leave. Fabulous. And yeah. I love that, the fact that, you know, your values were aligned. That was very much for me thinking, this isn't what I wanted to do. Right. This is not what I set out to do. It's just making me, it's made, it was actually making me ill because it was just so out of mismatch something had to go so thanks so thanks for sharing that yeah. um th th thanks so much for that so what to angela in your experience now 53 um fantastic age we're around the same age as that we both did the same movements we did, we did the moves so mm -hmm. what do you think is unique about pivoting um at this point in life what are the challenges or the opportunities you think are presented of, of doing it at this stage sure um so for me at this point it was kind of you know the feeling was in my body i, mm. I it was almost like um fears were not present in that moment they came they yeah. definitely came but in that moment it was just this leading to mm. to to move and so i moved into that and one thing that i was really really clear about when I got the first call, the first thing that came to mind were my children. Right. And they had seen me grow up in this company because I'd yeah. been, you know, almost two decades. And I, um, because it was this well-known company, I, I just thought about how much this would affect them, you know, to what extent mm -hmm. mom's role at this company, because yeah. I'd, you know, been promoted and, yeah to a, um, um, a nice management level, um, that was my first thought was yeah. how would it affect them? Yeah. On the other side of that, when I decided to leave, a part of it was I wanted them to see that they had options. Yes. That even though they were going to go to university, my, my um, my youngest child, you know, in Jamaica, we call him the wash belly. So my wash belly, <laughs> Isaiah, just graduated this last May and, you know, has a, a wonderful job. He just moved across the country there. So I wanted each of them to see that they could take that route yeah, or they could choose something else or something else or something else that they did not have to follow a linear path they mm -hmm. if they chose to and i'd shown them that but i never showed them that they had options mm -hmm. that became something that was really important to me also is to show them um my my journey um through get, getting off the beaten path yeah and that was a real motivator um for me not only for them to see where I succeed, but also for them to see where I struggle, well, where the failures happened, what I learned from those failures, how to um, move through the fear uh, and not expect that fear would not show up, <laughs> know that it will show up and, and show them how I move through it. And so it became this, um, this really, really expansive time of my life, you know, 
I could do this and I was also um, being um, a different type of role model to yeah. my children. That was a real motivator for me. Yeah, and, and I like that. It's just shown that there's another way, I suppose, of being happy. There's another way of navigating careers. It doesn't yeah. just have to be, as you said, the linear journey uh, mm -hmm. or the career that makes our parents feel good. Because yeah. um, I always say we give our parents bragging rights by doing the big jobs. Yeah. You know, it's not necessarily not necessarily always for not necessarily always for us. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I right. love I love you did that. Yeah, I'm so, gonna tell you a quick story that I I just found out about a year ago. So my mother um, died. Um, uh, it's probably about ten years now. I, I try not to keep track. Um, she's she's always here with me. Yeah. Uh, but when I was um, a teenager deciding which high school I was going to go to. I was in Brooklyn and um, in New York, there are three, what they call specialized high schools. You have to take an exam to, to get into. And I got into one of those schools, Brooklyn Technical High School, but I also um, got into two really prominent schools for my art. And of the three, I knew that the one that kind of fell in line with the script was Brooklyn <laughs> Tech, right? My brother was going there. My sister had gone to another of the of the top schools, and um, that is where my parents um, told me that I was going to go to that school. About a year ago, now this is several decades later. My sister told me, this This always makes me want to tear up. My sister told me that my mother had actually gone to her. My sister is four years my senior. Yeah. My sister told me that my mother had gone to her to get her advice on whether she should let me go to art school. Wow. Never thought that my mother ever gave it uh -huh. any consideration. Even though she encouraged my art, she's the one that sent me to art classes at Pratt Institute, which was walking distance from our home, a, a really um, well-respected um, university for, for the, the creative arts. Um, I never thought that she saw my art as something that I could build a career around, mm -hmm. but she actually, she actually inquired about that yeah. with one who was my closest person in the world yeah met with her and came to a decision where I thought the decision was just you know absolute right yes no you know what I mean yeah yeah, so, yeah. so much of a lesson in that um to have to know that your parents saw these things in you that um that you never thought that they did yeah yeah I think in that point, I think she was being a parent and protecting yeah. because it, it, I suppose when you think about it, there aren't there weren't many role models of black women who have been successful making money or a career in arts yeah, at exactly. that particular time. Right. And knowing that the tried and tested, yes. you know, the, the big job yes. um, would give you security. You know, mm -hmm. as a parent, she was doing her job. She yes. was doing her job. But, okay. it, it, but, but like you say, it's beautiful to know that she realized there was another side to you. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's a beautiful thing. It continues to be a beautiful thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So you, when you made that transition, Angela, at the age of 53, and you said, that, that's it, damn, I'm out, of corp I'm out of corporate. What do you think was the most difficult part of the transition? And what would have made that journey a little bit easier, do you think? Um, so. Um, so a lot of my, my, my coaching now is, 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 is centered around the ideas of, um, of your talents and, mm -hmm. and, you, you know, your, your gifts and also your needs, which is a part we, we often don't talk about. Yes. Um, and it's, 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 um, these, these, this way of seeing the world came out of so much that I learned when, when I was at, um, in my corporate role. Um, but I, I, um, I so so one of my talents 
is that I'm really flexible. I, I, um, reinvention does not come um, with a lot of difficulty for me. Um, yeah. Customizing things, you know, to, to, to fit a specific thing. But what kind of the flip side of that, the other side, the underbelly of our talents that everyone has are our vulnerabilities. So what that meant to me is was that it was really hard for me to focus on one thing. Right. right? I I I saw all the possibilities. And so it was hard for me to focus on a single thing because mm. I saw so many things that were possible. So the, <laughs> the, the possibility is the is the talent side, yeah. the top side, the head of the coin, yeah. the tail of the coin is that um, it became very difficult for me right. to figure out how to focus. And you know, a lot of what was playing in my head is, Angela, you need you need to focus. You're 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 too all over the place. You're too all of all, all over the place. But you know, I have to think about it. Okay. But I was in my career for almost 30 years. I finished university, which was which was, you know, showed my perseverance and stick to itiveness. Yes. I went to graduate school. So I had all of these things to remind me that I wasn't to see myself as a flip flopper. Mm. I see myself who so as someone who could see a lot of possibilities, but I also had to manage that. And mm. I to kind of make decisions about, okay, how do these things align? Do these things align? Which ones am I going to do now versus mm -hmm. later? You know, and kind of put um, um, good structure around these things that I wanted to do instead of um, initially just kind of finding it really difficult to focus yeah. in on the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know that once you you make a choice, you can try something, and you can change at another point, right? So yeah. that kind of created this this um, sense of, of freedom for me to know that I can try this for a while and then I can change, which I did and mm -hmm. I did. But mm -hmm. I did it with um, each time I focused in on the one thing and tried it, learned what I needed to learn. And then I moved on versus not knowing how to focus on. But that initial thing, that initial, yeah. kind of, oh my God, I could do my life <laughs> as an oyster. I can try whatever I like. Uh, for me and my wiring, that was um, that was difficult to manage. Yeah, and you know, I love how you framed that as trying something, learning from it, move on. Because in when sometimes you hear women say that, they see that I failed at that, yeah. Yeah. and I had to, and you know, and that's it. I just failed, or what? You know, however they frame. But mm -hmm. I like the fact that you framed it. You reframed it as that I'm going to try it. See yeah. what it's like, see if it fits. If it's not for me, what can I learn from it and what can I take away? Right. So, and so I want, I, when I talk to him, I want them to reframe what failure, mm. what failure means. So, I, I suppose the question I'm going to pose to you, Angela, sure. is how has failure made a positive difference in your life? Oh my gosh. Um, honestly, I only see failure as positive right now. And, um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say it that way, and then I'm going to kind of um, sprinkle some stuff on it to yeah. to make clear what I mean by that. Sprinkle away. <laughs> yeah. So there's a posture that I think serves one when they understand that life and failure and trials are a part of a a, a series of learning that we are meant to to do and. Um, my faith tradition teaches me that we are to be in a constant state of change, right? Mm -hmm. um, to, to become who we are to become. You, you, you don't get there without change and yeah. change has a way of happening as you, as you try things and fail at them. Yeah. And so you don't seek failure, but you, um, I had developed a posture where I would, okay, what is it that I need to learn? as I go through this. And that, when I reached the point in my life where I was able to do things that way, mm. it really became um, a, okay, now is when I have to really dig in those oars and, you know, and, and, and row hard and 
and and see what there is to learn. You know, when you go through an experience and and your intention is to learn mm. from. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's 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 transformative, yeah. right? Because you're learning for yourself. You're learning to teach someone else, <laughs> right? Instead of kind of going against the grain and um, woe is me, and um, you know, and and again, these these feelings are natural and. Um, I'm not saying that these are these are um, things to avoid. I'm saying yeah. that um, they're not places for you to to abide. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're things for you to think about for an hour a day, a week. But but again, in the posture of what is it that I am to learn? What mm -hmm. is it to learn? Mm -hmm. And so that is what failure means to me. It is. It is um, a process of learning that um, is a part of the journey of becoming who you are to become. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely like that. So, so if you had to start over again, start oh. from, sorry, start from scratch, I suppose. Uh -huh. Knowing what you know now, Angela, what would you do differently? Oh my gosh, you know, this is one of those questions that when you see people answer it, it's like, oh my gosh, sure, they don't have any regrets, you know. <laughs> I have regrets. I absolutely <laughs> I absolutely have regrets. But when I think about where I'm right now, hmm. how I feel in my body, literally and figuratively, how I feel in my body, I cannot see anything that I would pluck out um, that I had control over yeah. that I would have done differently, quite honestly. Um, I think a lot of that is because of this posture of learning, um, but it's also where, where I am right now. Yeah. Um, I really, really, really am amazed by myself, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm amazed by myself. And when you reach the point where, um, where you, you just, you either know who you are, yes. you know, or you feel like there's nothing that I can want to know that there's, there is an obstacle to me knowing. Mm -hmm. Mm. That that is a beautiful part of age. Mm. Why yeah. I call it the wisdom phase of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that is what the sum of your experiences can bring mm. you. Mm. Point where it's like you are wise. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I, for me, I think it's it's almost it's accepting who you are. This is me in yeah. my entirety, and I love who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm going to start thinking it's not for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so very I much. So. Word, um, I, I, I use the word amaze. Uh, my, my mother was an English um, teacher, and so words have always kind of mattered. Um, yes. me. And I use that word amaze um, because. It it has a um, it has a uh, it's like a mixture of um, of uh, you know you don't know what next what 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 wonderful thing am I going to do next mm. so it has this kind of futuristic feel to it and it yeah. also has this grounding of um, being clear about what you bring to the world yeah and um, you know just by just by just by being there yeah you know what you are naturally um good at doing what your natural best self is mm -hmm. i believe when you know that you cannot help but be amazed yes 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 you yeah. really can't yeah. you really can't it's I, I yeah so so it's that and um and then you know once you start to kind of feel yourself as being amazing, you're able to see other people, especially those who are wired differently. Yeah. Than you, oh my God, they're amazing too. Yeah. Do you know what I 
me we're amazing in these different ways and amazing and amazing and amazing and what you know that kind of synergy between that is i think what makes the world a beautiful beautiful place fabulous 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 so there's women listening to this listen to our conversation these 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 black, boomers, <laughs> these, these, these black boomers these black boomers talking about leaving corporate world and all the, these these women so what advice would you share with women who are embarking on their own pivot, their own transition? Oh boy. Um, the biggest one I think is to seriously be on the journey of, of self-discovery mm. and self-awareness, right? Because everywhere you go, there you are, yeah. right? Um, there's a song, many songs I'm sure that say that. Every You can't hide from yourself. Everywhere you go, there you are. Yeah. yeah? And so get to know this person, get to know this person, you know, how, however you um, reading, um, doing um, uh, 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 assessments, um, uh, you know, having a counselor or therapist, having your friends, just being on this. I think that writing is a great way to uh, get to know yourself. Yeah. I practice, which I've been doing now for almost three years, um, called Morning Writing. It's my my name. It, it's I just write stream of consciousness three pages a day. Whatever yeah. my mind, I write it down. I'm yeah. having conversations with with God. I'm having conversations with myself. I talk to myself. Hey, if I can do it out loud, <laughs> I, can do it. I write out what is on my mind. My answers come through my writing. Um, I get to kind of see how ridiculous I'm being, how much I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. All these things kind of come yeah. out of the practice of, of writing. So how, however you choose to do it for yourself, mm -hmm. I think being on a journey of self-discovery is the most important um, Thing that serves both you and yeah. everyone around you. Yeah. Because yeah. you are wonderfully made. You yeah. are wonderfully made. Yeah. And so when you come to find out who that person is, then you start showing her to the world. <laughs> and, 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 and I think yeah. we, we need to, we need to, we need to accept that we're always evolving. Yes. You know, because that's how we that's how life has been. It's always right. we're always evolving. There's yes. always something different, something new. And exactly. be accepting because sometimes it could be uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, especially especially yeah. for I suppose for some of us who have spent our whole life in the corporate world, we're thinking, yeah. this is the whole thing I plan to do. I've right. got what I plan to do. I got oh. the big job, I got the house, I got the car, I got the two and a half kids, I got the handsome husband. Mm -hmm. But still something still doesn't feel right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That that um, that part of it. And I just um, on, on my podcast, I had a conversation with my um, my best friend who I who I met at Brooklyn Tech. Um, and we were talking about the thing that you think is quirky or weird or a little mm -hmm. off about you that, you know, you know what it is. You know what it is that <laughs> that is probably an indication of where your joy is. And, and for me, joy is very, very different than, than happy, right? Yeah. You, you can be happy in joy, but yeah. joy is a, is a deeper, I call it a deep well of fulfillment, right? Mm -hmm. There is probably, a, a, that is probably an indicator of where your joy is, where you are, that mm -hmm. thing that is weird or you think is weird, or people kind of say, "Oh, why do you do it? Why do you do it that way?" And I mean, in a consistent, consistent yeah. way, not kind of the one-off. So if you're in yeah. these, these circles, right? Like me, I was in an IT um, space. Um, you know, I, I'm an uh, engineer and and um, uh, technologist by um, in my academic um, yeah. work, but a big part of me is um, is this empathetic leader yeah. and and someone who sees things differently i tend to ask why questions versus what questions right yeah. and so a lot of what i experienced um in it and what i had to push through are these people who think in a very sequential logical way mm -hmm. um 
and not ask the question, why does the client want this? Okay, they said they wanted blue, so I'm gonna make it blue. Well, there are 50 million shades of blue. <laughs> if you ask them why, and they tell you, oh, it reminds them of being in a white, then you will choose a shade of blue. Mm. That you won't choose a, 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 um, a more um, kind of subdued or, or gloomy blue, you got to ask the why question. And so I was in these spaces where I had to kind of, um, it was almost sometimes like feeling like a, a, a square peg in a round hole, yeah. trying to, you know, find your place. Well, that was actually an indicator to me of where my, my joy and where my talents lay. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always, always trying to get to okay who's being underserved who's not being listened to who's who who is a squeaky wheel that when you fix that squeaky wheels problem 80 percent of the issues go away mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i want to make sure you're solving the problem that is the real problem not you know the symptoms not yeah. the you know, not the kind of surface stuff. I always wanted to go deep and get to the core. Well, that is actually one of my talents. And so th this idea of um, the message in, in this little story is you might find that that thing that makes you feel like you're different from the pack, your family pack, your, your work pack, your friend pack, um, where, you know, you're almost you're in an echo chamber, but you're like, oh, but that doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> that is a place for you to investigate. Fabulous. But I Fabulous. think you can start digging and saying, hmm, why, mm -hmm. why, why do I think so differently than the people yeah. around me? Um, what is beautiful about that? What is amazing about that? Yeah. That's a great, that's a great, that's a great piece of advice. Yeah. And as you touched on joy and as you're a joy strategist, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. question there would be, we we are women of a certain age of a wonderful age yeah, so yeah. what is the joy in being over 50 or a black woman over 50 well i'm gonna say i'm not over 60 because i'm 61 well i'm not far behind i i'm i've got mine coming up very i am 59 and three quarters actually as i as i'm for my husband today i'm 59 and three quarters that's where i am <laughs> a beautiful place to be so I've checked off. I'm, I'm now in the in the other kind of um, uh, um, category. Um, what is beautiful about it? Oh my gosh! Um, particularly for me right now, I yeah. uh, I'm very agile. Right? My mm -hmm. my children have, um, by the grace of God, they're they're all established and yep. living life beautifully on their own. Um, and I um, sold the the big house you know, the, all, all the, all the stuff that was in it, primarily mm. maybe 95% of it is, is gone. Mm. Um, I moved to a more urban environment. I really felt like living in the suburbs. I was feeling, um, I was feeling really um, disconnected from, okay. from people, from communities, from a little noise. I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up yeah. in Jamaica. I, I need a little more energy than this. So <laughs> I sold the house. I got a um, a small apartment in in uh, in a, a city um, where I can walk to my coffee shop. I, I walk. I sometimes walk and do grocery shopping. I don't use my car as yeah. often as I used to, um, and I just feel like I'm really agile right now. Um, we're deciding, my sister and my bestie and I, we are exploring moving abroad. Um, and um, I, I, I don't, I'm not into consumerism. Right, the, yes. The way, that, yeah. the, the way that I used to be. I have yeah. things around me that I enjoy looking at. Um, and it's very, I don't invest in mm. things the way mm. that I used to. Mm. Yeah designer i like to have beautiful things around me but i do a lot of repurposing i i i thrift a lot i use facebook marketplace to find amazing things at mm -hmm. uh, you know a tenth of the price yeah, yeah. i don't want to feel attached to them right yeah. when time yeah. for them to go i don't want to feel oh my god i spent five thousand dollars for that. <laughs> that, that that is over with in my yeah. life 
right? There was a phase for that. Yeah. My face now, I want good quality. I want fewer things. Um, I want to feel um, uh, detached from the material things of life mm -hmm. um, and invest more in experiences and just, um, just um, yeah, being ready for whatever unfolds for my life. Yeah. I was going to say that, and you beat me through it because I said it is for me. It is all about experience. Yeah. It's about experiences now. It's not as you said the physical, the consumerism. It's yeah. about how does it make me feel? Yes. What does it bring to? What does it bring to me? How does it move me? And it yeah. is about you know how does it make me laugh? How does it make me feel? Right. You know? So yeah, I totally agree with you on the experience on the experiences. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That. It's funny, my 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 son, um, my middle son. Um, so the youngest one graduated in May and the, the family came um, from all over to mm -hmm. for him to graduate. He went to school um, not far from where I live. And so he opened my um, my kitchen cabinet to get something, to, you know, a glass to drink. Um, and he's used to, you know, in our old house, it was just stuff on stuff and stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah. So he says, Mom, where are all the glasses? And I said, listen, this is what I did, um, Janice. I only have in my cabinets now the things that I had set aside, the Lennox wine glasses, the Lennox plates, the all the things that I'd set aside for um, special occasion is what I use for every day now. <laughs> it's what I use for every day. And so, and it's just, it's just me primarily, right? So I just have fewer things. I don't buy things that I don't need. And yeah. so he's like, mom, where, where are all the glasses? And I said, they're right there. And he's like, mom, where are all the glasses that I said, Johnny, this is, this is my new life, right? Yeah. Yeah. So after he left, I, um, there's an amazing thrift store close to my house. So I went there and I saw this beautiful set of glasses. So I bought a few and I sent him a picture. <laughs> and I said, look what I got. And he said, great. And I said, I only got two. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I was excited for just a moment. <laughs> wow. I, need two. I, I only knew, need two, Ajani. And that yeah. is it. It's like there were others. I think there were maybe five there. I didn't need five. Yes. I yeah. only need two. And, and so once I feel like there is not enough room in my cabinet, it, I'm, I'm accumulating too much. Mm -hmm. it's things away it really is so uh so anyway that's <laughs> that's my life right now i call it my agile agile phase of life now pick up yourself and go whenever you're ready exactly yeah exactly. i love it love it love it so i suppose the quest last question before i, I kind of start wrapping up sure. is what does success angela feel like to you oh man i I cannot think of success without the word joy. Yeah. Um, this deep well of fulfillment um, where you know that whatever storms come, mm -hmm. you're deeply rooted. Yeah. That to me is success. That to me is, um, I think of it like an account that you, you just keep, adding to um and you know obviously you you use as well but the focus is on putting joy into the account so that when it's when it's um when life be lifing as they say yeah. <laughs> you you are not uprooted you're not um you know you can you can bend but you won't break yeah, yeah. that to me is is success and Every good thing comes out of that. Right. Every good thing comes out of that. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now I know you've got a lot of things going on. Mm. So can you share with the listeners, I suppose, how they can get hold of you or, or basically what's happening right now and how they can get hold of you or get in touch with you, connect with you? Absolutely. So um, as you read in um, my bio, I am a joy strategist. And what that means is I actually um, coach older women on how to strategically 
um, put joy into their life, to design a life where joy is centered. And um, so that is my coaching practice. And you can find me at headspacenc.com. That's H-E-A-D. S P A C E N C dot com. That is how you can um, reach me for all the things that I do. I'm a speaker. I am. Um, I also, because joy is the um, joyful money making is a big part of what I do personally too. I do a, a, a lot of um, different things. I still work in theater. I teach um, uh, on. Um, Wick, wick supervising and things like that but um but in terms of kind of my big shingle it is a joy strategist which is a coach um on how to make joy centered in your life fantastic and uh, didn't you say you had an event coming up oh my gosh i have a big event coming up oh see i remembered <laughs> <laughs> it's in january I have to look at the dates because to me, January is so far out. But actually, uh, a dear friend of mine, um, Kim Coles, who I also met in high school, has a big event coming up in LA called Bold Dacious. It's bold mm -hmm. and audacious together. And Fabulous. so the bestie, um, Leslie and I will be doing a live um, podcast at that event. And I'll give you all the details so you can share it with your listeners. But that is a big deal that is in in January. And I, I hope some of you can join us there. Fantastic. And if they want to connect with you or find out more about what they what you do, Angela, how can they do that? How can listeners do that? Sure. So check out my podcast. If you <laughs> this is where I show up completely myself, completely myself, sometimes like Angela, well, that is what I'm doing right now, living, living out loud. It is Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. And we are on YouTube. We're on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Um, and you can also reach me at, as I said, at headspacenc.com. Fantastic. And I'll be sure to put all the links in the show notes uh, for you to connect with Angela. Angela. Well, that was my last question, Angela. And it's been fabulous having you as a guest today. Thank you. It's been wonderful being here. Um, thank you for what you do. I, I I love your podcast. That's that's where I got to know who you were and, and knew that I wanted to come and spend some time with you. Thank you for having me. No, you're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>